This movie lives or dies on the chemistry between you and Emery Cohen and you and Donald Gleason. We have to feel like this is a real battle in her mind, and we do. We, you know, um, Donald, Saoirse was cast first, um, and then Donald was second. And they're both actors in very different ways that I wanted to work with really, really strongly. And Tony took a lot longer to find, and that may be because my expertise is in Ireland and England, and it took a while to find somebody who um, had the right degree of masculinity, on the one hand, to be believably an Italian-American plumber in the 50s, but who also was sweet and who didn't mind. I wanted an actor who, was, who would be egoless enough to spot that she's slightly out of his league and that he worships her and it, it's okay, and that he's not going to be the cool kid. You know, that, and that's a very particular task and it's a big ask of a lot of young actors because they tend to be happier working sometimes with darker material. And Emery had done a lot of dark material, but he did a reading put himself on tape, which was one of those tapes, uh, auditions, which it's fair to say we all looked at and went, Absolutely. there's our guy. So, and from there, then there's a process of actually getting him to the role and directing and everything, but you know, and, and but that was how they were cast. So it wasn't, it was really about cast the right actor and, and the chemistry will take care of itself, which it really did. Mm. I think all I'll add to that, if I may, is that we also, through that process, you know, because names come up, and it was it was really about finding that right person who was going to, that it was going the film would work with that sort of triangle, because it wasn't worth just sort of shoehorning the wrong person, and um, so that was also very. It was just like we should just kind of go for go for broke and not worry, but, you know, just get the right actors and. So every time anyone on in this film writes a letter, reads a letter, opens a letter, I lose it. There, it's just, it, it, I don't hides know if- Hides a letter? Yeah, what, hides, hides a letter? Hides a letter? Yeah, well I didn't like that. I was not happy no. with that. <laughs> but I don't know if you're like piping in tear gas at every moment that there's a letter being written, but it, or is, it, is it the music? Yeah. Is, what's, what's the secret there in putting it all together and how did you calibrate so that you would want the audience to feel something without going overboard? I think I mean, it's a beautiful score by Michael Brook, uh, um, but I think the music for me, it's a subtle score, can only support what's going on on the screen. I mean, it can't generate an emotion, or it, well, it can pump up a false emotion, as we know, and often does. But, you know, when we were cutting this film, we used very, very, very little mu music on it because we never wanted to create false effects with it, wanted it to work, to distill it down to the emotional essence, and then we would support it with what we needed to support it with later. The answer's in front of you. I mean, it's in her face. It's when she looks at that letter in the bedroom, the first one, and when she's reading it in the diner the next day and rereading it and looks at herself in the mirror. You know, uh, that's it there. It's, it's, it's um, an ability to access a rawness and a vulnerability. And Saoirse was very close to those emotions herself, having moved away from home in the year before we shot. And it's fair to say they were very available to you on set in a way that was quite immediate. So. It's, it's not quite fair to say there was no acting in, in, in involved. There was beautiful acting involved, but it was acting that was very close to where her head and her heart were on, on that set every day. And then you can come in with everything else around. And, and with, you know, Yves Boulanger, great cameraman, responded. And he's a, I think he's a great cameraman partly because he loves faces. And whatever Saoirse would do in a take, he'd respond organically to it. So that's how those moments all work. I also love all of the boarding house dinner scenes. They're, they're, they're so fun, and the, you, just, you just get a smile on your face whenever there's an establishing shot of all of those girls it, and Julie Walters sitting there. What were those like to film? Did you film them all in the same week or two? Did you scatter them throughout the couple yeah. days? A week or two? <laughs> what do you think our budget was? <laughs> I mean, we must have shot the, all of the scenes in four days, wow. three days. Less. Less. Three days, I think, to do everything there. Um, wow. it, was an, it was an absolute honour to actually be in so many scenes that just consist of women. To just be sitting around a table. <laughs> yeah, we don't see it. We never see it. And to see, and to me, this is the real heart of this film more than anything, um, is that one woman is kind to another and helps her to grow and to become the person mm. that she can be. 
Um, and so to have these scenes with Julie Walters, who I have grown up watching in everything, she's in everything at home. Um, <laughs> she is. She. I've grown. I've grown up watching her on TV in film. She's so wonderful and she's so humble and is very much just another, not just, but she's another one of the actors and um, everyone was so funny and touching and even, you know, in contrast to all of these great funny scenes that we have, to then have NJ, who plays Sheila, do that gorgeous little scene in the bathroom where she talks about her husband, you know? And again, it's just her, she doesn't She doesn't come along to Eilish and go, well, here's what you can learn from me, kid. She's like, she's just sharing her experience and that in turn helps Eilish and helps her to grow and kind of, um, have a clearer perspective on herself and her, and her own situation. And I know that I really experienced when I moved away, um, the, the really uh, special bond that you have with the women in your life, you know, when you're growing up and you're sort of figuring out where you stand in the adult world when it comes to yourself and work and relationships and, everything else and it was the women that I had th it is the women that I have in my life that um that I leaned on and so to actually be able to celebrate that in a film female kind of bonding um was amazing mm. so most of what we see on the screen is Montreal doubling for Brooklyn but you have you had a couple days where you actually shot in Brooklyn what was most important for you to achieve in that limited time and what was it like for you to actually be in the borough for those couple days? Well, we, we had a lot to do, is the answer, in those two days, which was to convince everybody that the whole thing had been shot in New York. And <laughs> um, we, did, we did Coney Island, obviously, because nothing doubles for Coney Island. And we did the whole of the exterior on the brownstone streets. And it was to try and maximize um, as much feeling, because we had shot it all on location in Ireland, and it really goes into the bones of the film when you do it on location. So, um, but it was quite a particular homecoming for you, isn't it? It was, yeah, I mean... And you were born in New York City, we should tell I was them. born in the Bronx, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I was born in the Bronx. Um, to, I have to say, to finish the film in Brooklyn, er, we, we shot on in Coney Island the first day, we had two days, shot in Coney Island the first day, we were all knackered at that stage. We, you know, every single day, we were doing two to three big scenes. Um, and I remember one scene actually when Ailish is kind of contemplating going home and her and Tony go to the restaurant where they had their first date um, and I'm leaning on him and everything. Th you know, that was a obviously a very um, big part of the story and, and it was, uh, we were anxious about it, Emery and I. And we started shooting that at like 12 o'clock at night after doing so many other things that day. So by the time we got to Brooklyn and shot on Clinton Street and shot outside the Brownstones, and it was just me and Emery for the whole day. And um, we, we, I mean, we had so many different setups. To finish it there, and as John says, to have a homecoming. And again, like Eilish, um, at that stage, we had gone full circle. Our, our journey had gone full circle. And we started out in Ireland and we were all there together. And um, to finish it off where, um, in the place that really makes her who she is, was was incredibly special, I think. And my mom came in for it as well. And it was our birthday and, um, and she came over and she spent the last couple of days with me. And to have her there when we, when we wrapped this film that, just she she knew how um, how much I cared about it, you know. So to have her there was uh, incredibly special. 